What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. And let me start off this video by saying a lot of the model data and a lot of the model runs you're about to see, take them with a grain of salt. By the time they impact land, they're going to be several days to two weeks out. So before I show you anything, bear that in mind before we get into this, because a lot of these models look quite disturbing at the surface. However, we're going to do a deep dive in and see what the possibilities are that this kind of stuff is going to happen. So let me go ahead and give you some cliff notes. Earlier today, we reported here on Pat's Path Predictor that a potential major hurricane is expected to develop from 95L, and it is rapidly organizing and is expected to rapidly intensify in the main development region. Well, new data has come out that is absolutely in my opinion, shocking, especially for how good the conditions are for the, across the Atlantic Ocean for hurricane development. So with that bearing in mind, let's go ahead and show you the NHC. They are now at a 60-90 probability of a tropical system developing. That means there's a 60% chance of formation in the next 48 hours and a 90% chance of formation in the next seven days. And here's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to read this out. And some of the wording on this is rather interesting to say the very least. So here we go. Showers and thunderstorms are showing signs of organization in association with a tropical wave located several hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for further development, and this system is expected to become a tropical depression in two to three days. If we go ahead and pull out the uh, previous outlook right here, we're going to go ahead and show you that. This is what we were showing you pr uh, previously. It was expected to become a tropical depression around midweek. Now they're expecting this to happen in the next two to three days. So that's another situation we need to pay attention to. Additional strengthening is likely late this week while the system moves westward to west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour over the central and western portions of the tropical Atlantic. You do not see that wording unless they're quite confident that something big's going to happen, especially with an invest. So it's going to be interesting when this thing organizes and when this thing becomes a full tropical depression. We already know that there, at the upper and mid levels, there is a, there is a closed circulation. It's those lower levels that count at this point. So we need to all pay that uh, that in mind and keep uh, keep that in mind. As we move forward, also uh, what I am noticing is the cone from earlier uh, shifted a little bit, uh, shifted a little bit more to the south. We'll go ahead and uh, show you that. Yeah, the cone shifted a little bit more to the south, even from like 12 hours ago. Think it shifted. It's a little. It's kind of um, subtle, but they're doing what the models are trending right now. What the NHC is looking at is potential for this system in this cone path right here to be impacting the Leeward Islands and Virgin Islands at least in the next seven days. So that's what I'm uh, taking out from all of this. So now we're going to go ahead and show you some operational runs. And we have the 12Z data right here. And here's the European's latest run. Previously with the 0Z, zero, zero the European was the only model that was expecting a trough in the extreme more, uh, more subtropical to polar areas to deform and the storm to push more to the north. Well, the European has basically with the 12Z, that's changed completely. So here's what we have going on. The system starts organizing and developing in the next three days or so. Then it starts to strengthen right after that, gets down to strong tropical storm strength by four days out, potentially category one strength by that point. And then this thing starts to continue to organize and starts to intensify further, gets down to the 980s, then rapidly intensifies as it approaches the Lesser Antilles, down to 965 just north of that, according to that, and then continues to do that. It undergoes potentially a couple of eyewall replacement cycles as it moves through, but it gets down to the to 944 millibars by 210 hours out. And then... Basically, that trough that was over there, it's not there anymore. We're going to go ahead and kind of compare this to the 0Z. 0Z, we were already starting to see this trough uh, build up. We can go ahead and show, uh, we can potentially go ahead and show you the 500 height anomalies right here. This is the trough that was building up that was expected to push the system more to the north. This is where we were at, we're at 12Z. Boom. It's not there anymore. 
So, yeah. Now, Jersey's like, what trough at this point? So, the chances of this thing pushing up further to the north and curving just uh, curving right uh, uh, and uh, right of the U- U.S. East Coast and the Bahamas are decreasing. Keep this in mind. This is at least 10 days out. This is highly unpredictable. Maybe the Zero Z European is going to show that trough building up again. We don't know. We're just giving you the data that just came in. So before you do anything, just keep an eye on it, and keep and we'll keep you updated here on Pat's Path Predictor and Storms United. We'll continue to feed me more and more information that I will give to you as soon as it becomes available. With that in mind, we're going to go ahead and show you the GF, uh, the GFS uh, as kind of compare. So here's the GFS. We're going to go ahead and show you that. This is the 12Z GFS. 12Z GFS had this thing kind of moving more to the west, impacting the Antilles, and then starting to make that turn out to, uh, out to sea. Although the, this GFS has this thing making a very close pass to North Carolina and Virginia and the East Coast at the 12Z run. If we go ahead and show you the upper dynamics and the 500 millibar height anomalies, well, the trough kind of is there, which helps facilitate the turn, but then it stops, and that's why it turns more and more towards North Carolina. We're going to go ahead and show you what the 18C is showing right here. Boom. Absolutely nothing there. Much weaker trough. The system's pushing more and more to the west. So uh, that's what's going on. By the time the trough does emerge right here, it does uh, do a little bit of it, but by the time this ridge reemerges, it's going to be too late, and the system, according to the GFS, does start pushing towards the Carolinas. Keep in mind, this is about two weeks out. Models at this point are fantasy land. So with that bearing in mind, we'll uh, continue showing this because this model apparently is calling for this thing to hit North Carolina, move through Virginia Beach, D.C., Delaware, and the East Coast right here. This is a scenario at this time extremely unlikely to happen. I want everyone to understand this. This is extremely unlikely to happen unless we see more data run that kind of cross-checks this. This is the only model that is calling for this, and it's the only model that goes this far out. It's also the only model that does not use the proper grid spacing like the other models do. So take it with a massive grain of salt. I don't think this is going to happen at this time. So, but now we'll go ahead and show you the CMC. This is the 12Z CMC. CMC has this thing organizing and developing, has this impacting the Leeward and Virgin Islands as a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane, starts to impact the Bahamas, and then it starts to make that turn to the uh, turn to the north afterward. The 12Z CMC did, does have that ridge there, that, that, that sorry, that trough there that we're talking about. But with the new data that's coming in, especially with the European calling it off and the GF calling it off it's a little bit it becomes a little bit more interesting how this is going to play out next one we're showing you is the icon we'll show you the 12z because that goes further uh, further out 12z icon organizes and develops and it's and it kind of remain is the run to the pack it remains pretty weak but it does impact puerto rico the dominican and the dominican republic haiti and the Bahamas as a weaker system models are one thing conditions are another thing remember that going forward so, because here's what we have going on. Here's the global sea temperatures, 28 plus degrees Celsius from the coast of Africa and where this system is all the way through the Lesser Antilles, all the way through uh, the Atlantic Basin, through the Bahamas and the Carolinas. So that's our global sea temperatures right here. And some areas get to over 30 plus degrees Celsius, which is 86 plus degree Fahrenheit for those of you living in the United States. And according to some of these tracks, if this thing enters the northeastern Caribbean, like we've reported earlier, it's going to be moving through piping hot waters that could potentially help it intensify and through better OHC. Because where the system is at right now, it's in about an area of 25 to 50 ocean heat content. But right... but. Keep in mind, as the system pushes further to the west, as this thing moves into more like 50, 75, maybe even 100 OHC, things get a bit more interesting. And by the time it gets to the western half of the main development region, we're about 100 to 125 to even 150 OHC in some places. So that's what we have to keep in mind. And now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear. The wind shear from the Gulf of Mexico to, uh, to pretty much the eastern part of the main development region it's open season at this point. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to go on. 
And we'll go ahead and show you the shear forecast brought to you by the European for those who did not see the earlier one, because the shear is expected to remain pretty much the same and pretty much weak throughout the uh, this thing's lifespan. So this thing starts to so this thing, uh, the shear right here is forecast to weaken a little bit in the main development region. And then it moves out to, and then it moves out, heads towards the Antilles right here. There is uh, some inflow and outflow that this, this model is picking up. That's not really shear. If there is shear, it's maybe like 15 knots, which is still very favorable for development. There is a bit of shear that could potentially impact it down the road right here. However, based off of what I'm seeing, that may in the short term help the inflow and outflow, but long term could potentially tear it, uh, start tearing it apart. We're not 100% sure yet. This is 10 days out. But crossing that with the moisture component, there is some dry air that surrounds this system. However, it's in a very, very dense moisture pocket, so it shouldn't really have any issues organizing or developing unless the dry air potentially intrudes it, which... I'm like the only possibility I see that happening is if maybe four to five days out when it's uh, when it's nearly surrounded by all that dry air, something happens and it goes through that. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen at this point, but environmental conditions are still incredibly conducive for development, and I'll just leave it at that. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the latest track models and the intensity. Track models right here, as you can see, Pretty much similar to the 12C, if, if not a little bit of more of a shift to the south. Either way, it looks like the Lesser Antilles and the Virgin Islands are looking at potential impacts with this system. Intensity models have been way off the charts. We're now having a lot of them get up to major hurricane strength. Like Almost all of them have this at least a Category 1 uh, hurricane. Keep that in mind. A lot of them have it getting up to major hurricane, which is category three strength at least. We have four models going up to category four strength, and the HF uh, the HFS runs have this up to category five strength. I don't know if it's going to get to that or not, but I'm not ruling out a major hurricane at this time, primarily due to all the conditions. Again, models are one thing; conditions are a whole other ballpark. Keep that in mind. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some of the models that are coming out. They're not going to exactly be the most complete, but they're complete enough to really present here on Pat's Path Predictor. Here's the HMON right here. Has this thing organizing and developing, starts to strengthen in the next 48 hours. Starts to intensify at a very rapid pace. Between 48 hours, we're at 1,001 millibars. By 72 hours, we're down to 984. So that already is speaking alarm bells right there for rapid intensification. Then it st starts to organize more and strengthen even more. Gets down to a 941 millibar system by the time we're at about 117 hours out. I will say it could go lower or higher depending on wh what the storm does, whether it goes through an eyewall replacement cycle or not. We're not 100% sure, but that's what the HMON is predicting. We'll go ahead and show you at least what that, what the HWARF is calling for in the next three days or so. This system is having this thing organize and develop and strengthen at a very rapid pace. By 66 hours out, we're already down to a Category 1 hurricane, a mid-range Cat 1, so we'll have to wait and see when the rest of that HWARF comes out. Uh, the HAFSA runs are a bit wonky, at least with these ones right here, so bear with me. HAFSA has this thing kind of as like a tropical storm, then strengthens up to a hurricane after five days, which is pretty interesting because if you take a look at this, these are what it's calling for at this time, the intensity of that. So I find that kind of interesting, but either way, models are one thing, conditions are a whole other ballpark. We're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out. helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.